everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake, you're watching Dude Ranch DIY. Just threw the bucket on the Kubota L3901 tractor here. Um, we are finally going to get around to spreading some of those chips that I brought back um, from a job. Well, the job was last weekend, but you saw it in a video, I don't know, a couple videos back. Um, I'm continuing to spread these chips over in my parking area, kind of um, out at the end of the Woodyard Road. I'm hoping to be able to use this as like a temporary spot, um, temporary solution um, and spot to store more IBC totes of firewood um, once the chips kind of settle down a little bit. So we're gonna go over there, spread those chips, and then we're probably, if we have time, yeah, uh, if we have time, we're gonna throw on the brush hog and do a little brush hogging down by the road um, just to, to keep the weeds and everything down. That way, Sarah and I have good visibility when we're pulling out of the driveway because uh, definitely don't want anybody to get hurt. So here we go. Okay guys, got those two piles knocked down pretty quick. It took like 10 minutes. Uh, the tractor is awesome for doing stuff like that. Um, now in the initial video where Sarah and I did this, or actually Sarah spread most of the chips, um, I had a lot of people concerned and saying that, oh, the chips are all just gonna turn to mush. They're gonna turn to mud in a couple of years, blah, blah, blah. Not gonna be able to support weight. Um, yeah, I know. Um, my, this is just like a temporary plan for right now. Um, my plan is to continue expanding the wood yard in other areas. Um, but until I do that, I'm just kind of using this area here as a way to, that I will be able to, um, store some totes on here. Not going to be like driving the trucks or anything or parking anything on here permanently. 
just uh, the totes. And I'll probably, I don't know, we'll see. I might put down pallets underneath the totes to help them from like sinking down into the chips over time. I haven't quite gotten that far yet, but chips are cheap, obviously, because I do tree work. Normally I have to pay to get rid of the chips. Um, so if I can dump them here and actually use them for something productive, that's kind of killing two birds with one stone. Um, so that's kind of my whole idea and plan here. Definitely not permanent. And by the time that these things turn to dirt or mud or whatever, um, hopefully <laughs> I won't be using them as storage anymore if everything goes to plan. So yeah, I mean, just basically roughly spreading them out, nothing crazy, kind of like drove them in using the, the weight of the tractor a little bit. Don't want to get too close to the edge because that's where it starts getting soft. But um, I mean, this first pile, it's been here about two weeks now and uh, it's already gotten considerably harder. Um, you can just feel like the difference of where the new stuff is versus this stuff. Um, you can kind of tell too, like, stuff in the back that we just spread is pretty lumpy. Whereas this stuff, um, it's rained a couple times and it's kind of just settled in on its own pretty good. Um, they kind of pack themselves in there. So, yep, that's that. Um, now my plan is to hook up the brush hog. I went around yesterday um, with the sprayer on the back of the tractor and some Roundup and I just started spraying like all these weeds and stuff you could see. Um, we have like grass growing in on the driveway here and weeds and stuff. So it's already starting to brown up a little bit. Um, we have a bunch up there by where we park along the wall and stuff. There's Louie just basking in the hot humidity. Gus is out here somewhere too. But uh, yeah, I did that, didn't film it because it's pretty boring stuff. But basically what my plan is with the brush hog, I kind of brush hog like three times a year. Uh, I already did it once this year, but um, this area over here, you can see it's shorter up to like that telephone pole, but I brush hog that like three times a year just to keep the weeds down. Cause if I don't, it gets hard to see. Yo! It gets hard to see when you're pulling out of the driveway. Um, so I like to do that. And then if we walk all the way over here. I hit this whole area with the weed whacker yesterday, um, chopped down because I can't obviously get on this hill with the brush hog. And then I went ahead and sprayed all this uh, with the remnants of the weed killer that I had in the tank. Um, but my plan is to kind of come in here where it flattens out and try and brush hog up some of that stuff just between me and my neighbor because this stuff isn't all that appealing to the eye and I'll just kind of mow it down over here too. There's like a big rock over where that hump is. Um, and then I kind of mow going up the hill as well. And it just kind of, you know, I've been putting down chips here, but I need a lot more to really keep the weeds down fully, completely. Um, the grass is looking pretty brown from all this heat that we've been having um, and lack of rain. It's, uh, you can like almost hear it crunching underneath the feet, but that's all right. Hopefully uh, we'll have cooler weather upon us soon. And uh, before you know it, I'll be overseeding and thatching and stuff in the fall to plant, uh, you know, more grass overseed. So I'm gonna go hook up the brush hog, do a little brush hogging. I got some brush hogging to do up in the back too. Um, so we'll see what we can get done. It's just so hot and humid. I'm just trying to get the stuff done that I've been meaning to get done um, because I don't really feel like cutting firewood or splitting or anything. When it's this hot and humid, you can like cut the air with a knife. It's pretty brutal. Um, I'm sure it's like that a lot uh, in a lot of the spots where you guys live as well. So uh, we're all going through this together, but just gotta keep staying productive and try and get done what we can get done. Um, before you know it, the fall will be here and the winter and we'll be wishing it was warm again. So it's just the way it goes, I guess.
Okay guys, just threw on the brush hog and now I'm trying to grease it up just before I use it. I got this awesome battery powered Milwaukee grease gun, but let me know in the comments below if you guys have used these types of things before. It doesn't have to be Milwaukee. I'm sure they're all pretty much the same. I got the lock and lube coupler on the end, but I can never get this thing to prime. It's like always, I'll, I'll push the button and nothing comes out. And I push this button, which is like supposed to be the primer, um, while I'm while I'm pulling the trigger, and it's just I, I always have the hardest time getting this thing to actually work. When it works, it's fantastic, and I can grease stuff up really quickly with little mess. But I seldom get it to work like the first time. I usually end up spending 20 minutes futzing with it and then I get it to finally work and then it'll stop after like two grease irks. So I end up using the old style grease gun, the pump one. But I mean, this thing was like an investment and it's a really nice tool. I would just love to be able to use it. So let me know if you guys have one of these and any tricks that you might have. Um, I'm gonna try and get this thing to work, but I'd be surprised if it works, to be quite honest, unfortunately. So here we go, putting it on the Zerk. And I'm just pushing the button and nothing comes out. I'll push this, the primer button, get the air out. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Now, there, there is grease in here. As you can see, it is full. I really, just don't know what I'm doing wrong here. Um, I mean, the, the tube, tube's definitely not full, but I mean, it's not empty either, so I'm gonna try put this in again. Sometimes, yeah, so I didn't thread it on this time all the way. Now I'm gonna pull the plunger, push that in. So see now, I just end up wasting a bunch of grease. Now it's working. You can hear how the motor changes sound. See? There we go. Now grease is coming out. So that's good. Okay, so we got that one. Now, let's get this one here on the wheel. There we go. Grease starting to come out on that side at least. Yep. Okay, so we got two of them to work, or the gun to work on two of them. Let's go do the PTL. There we go. Okay, that one took. Now, we got one more up here. Safety shrouds are kind of annoying. There it is. Okay.
Well, got it to work without too much effort this time. Um, I don't know if it's just the heat and the fact that I store the grease gun in the position like that and then the heat, you know, warms up the grease so the grease kind of all settles to the bottom of the tube and then creates like an air channel or something. I don't really know, um, but if you guys got any tips, let me know in the comments below, I'd appreciate it. Uh, for now, let's get to brush hogging. So as you can see, two passes and like five minutes later, all nice and mowed down. Now uh, we'll have no problem seeing out of the driveway um, when we're pulling out. Uh, the telephone pole is kind of our property line and uh, you know that's, that's kind of where I go up to. So now we can go over to the other side and get um, the other part of the property. Alright guys, we got that mowed up, it looks a lot better along the road here, um, kind of uniform, and now uh, both my neighbor and us will be able to see, don't have to look at all those six foot tall, eight foot tall weeds as we approach the house. Um, this section here is like an old, old stone wall running through it, um, like right over there, and it's pretty steep with the hill, so I'm not going to attempt that. I uh, uncovered a big rock here. I was able to like kind of push it and rock it, but because there's a hill going down here, I'm afraid that uh, if I do push it out of its hole, it'll roll right down into the road. It could cause an accident. So I'm just gonna leave that for now. Found some more rocks over here. Um, all this is kind of like no man's land. I'm not gonna be able to get in there with the machine. There's just too many rocks and the old stone wall, like I said. So. Now I'm just going to come in here, kind of mow up some of this stuff quick, knock it down as much as I can, and uh, that'll be it for this section.
right guys, that's it. Just put the tractor away. I uh, I didn't set up a camera up here, but brush hogged up here um, around the foundation to the old barn. I gotta come in here with the weed whacker and just kind of weed whack up close to the rocks and stuff. Um, did over here and then uh, a little something unexpected. That's why I forgot to set up the camera, but uh, you know, this is our house. We have our neighbor's house over here. He has a dog. It's like best friends with Gus and Louie. And we've been talking about having a trail between our houses. So I finally, since I had the grapple and the brush hog on at the same time, came in and uh, roughed in a trail here. Comes through the woods um, over to our neighbor's property. That way uh, we don't have to like walk through the woods and stuff. Um, I'll come back with some wood chips and probably the bucket. Just smooth everything out a bit. Um, I just did this pretty quick in like 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, that's that. So, so that's gonna be it for this one. Uh, it's pretty hot. I'm gonna head over to my buddy's lake, hang out, float in the lake, maybe crack open a couple cold ones. But um, as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, wouldn't be possible without you. You guys keep me going making these videos, even on these hot, hot, humid, terrible dog days of summer. Um, gotta keep pushing forward. So I appreciate you guys watching. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate it. Any questions, comments, or feedback, throw it down in that comment section. But for now, I'm Jake. This is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here next time. Isn't that right, guys? You ready to go into? Yeah, let's get some AC.